your relationship series is on your phone anyways. <laughs> Even though you can download it technically and put it on your page. Technically, I can't. Technically, you can. How? Because you said. That. Yeah, when you go by yourself. When you do a, a live with somebody else, it doesn't. <laughs> it's not meant to be on yours. Do you see what we're dealing with? <laughs> anyways, we're going to give it some time to log in. 657 is three more minutes um, before we dive into it. Uh, you know, feel free, like she said. What up, bro? What up? Um, tell us where y'all joining from. Um, how's y'all weekend? You know, how y'all uh, enjoying y'all Memorial Hi, Day Leslie. weekend? Um, somebody said happy birthday. Who the heck said happy birthday? On it's TikTok? my birthday every day. Uh, <laughs> you funny as heck. <laughs> it's my birthday every day. Every day, every day. What up, Sonya? Um, Again, Godly Relationships Part 3, Part 3, Part 3, uh, for those that Joining are... Joining from Nigeria, babe, from Nigeria. Look at that. What's up, my Nigerian brother? Um, <laughs> those that have got, you know, got the chance to watch us live for Episode 1, Episode 2, we appreciate that. If y'all have not been able to catch us with 1 and 2, you know, you can go to my page and you can go to the series of the Yada, uh, the Yada Experience. Yes. And you can catch all the Bible studies that we have done um, together, you know, based and surrounding around the Yada experience. Um, and this series right now that we are on the God of Relationships, um, we appreciate the love. We appreciate the support. The inboxes. We appreciate it. You know, never feel, you know, um, what is it? Ashamed or never feel that you can't hit us up. Um, yeah. Hit us up. You know, we're about doing the kingdom's business. Kingdom work. Hey, shout out the shirts, though. So, Jasmine, thank you so much for making these shirts. Yes, Say King sir. Leo, Kingdom Life Ministries. Hey, you Shout know, we're about supporting each other. editing skills. We're about supporting <laughs> each other, you know. Project Yada. Uh, we got Life Beyond the Blade and Kingdom Life Ministries. Yes. And, and, you know, God's just going to bring it all together anyway. So, when we get to that point, you know, we'll figure out what it's going to be. What it's going to be, even though I believe that, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. yeah. I'm just joking. I'm just, just joking. joking. I'm just right, joking. It's seven o'clock. Uh, you got one more minute. Also, feel free to leave on Instagram. I'm pretty sure you can or ask Facebook questions. Too, I think. Questions and Facebook. Yeah. If you can ask questions, I'm not sure about TikTok. I know y'all coming. Y'all kind of go on TikTok, but if you stay in, be uh, leave us some questions. We Facebook. I mean, not Facebook, but Instagram. Instagram is tripping. It's tripping right now on my phone. So hopefully, you know. Um, it kind of works with us tonight, but how's everybody doing? Let me see some emojis. <laughs> I, I, look, I hate the fact that you can't, that they just can't talk right, right I, back to you. Not only that, it feels kind of, it's, it's a little bit more weird because normally we're more conversational, like mm -hmm. on the opposite side. So now we're sitting next to each other and it's just like, I can't like, you know, send like little hearts or emojis or anything. Ah, Hi, now. Anyway, you could, you could, uh, you could still send them. I'll catch him in, 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 in life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's seven? Yes, yes, sir. So it's seven o'clock. We are going to get started. This is Godly Relationships Part 3. Um, again, as we are going throughout this live, feel free to ask your questions about anything that we're talking about. Don't forget that we are looking here, we are looking here, and we are looking here. There's we got three phones today. Three. We on Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok. TikTok. Um, I just thank God and I can't, you know, I can't wait till we in person every day so we can continue to keep this set up, you know, um, uh, oh, oh, I know, but anyways, <laughs> y'all so picking up what he's put down, right? Okay. I'm just making sure. All right. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with a word of prayer. So woman of God, if you want to go ahead and kick that off for us so that we can get to this live. You ready? Yes, ma'am. All yes, right, guys. For just giving us an amazing day we're in honor for that we thank you for this moment of conversation and god impartation to every individual's lives who are on the opposite side of the screen god let everything that we say be on be fruitful god and that everybody can be touched that something that we say that something that is just delivered through our mouths through you god can make an impact god we present to you this live ourselves our relationship and every relationship that comes out of this in jesus name we pray amen 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 amen, amen. All right, so uh, the first thing that we're going to be bringing you guys, first and foremost, our uh, topic for today is called Fighting Temptations. 
It was actually a favorite movie of mine. Like that's the one with Beyonce, right? Beyonce and yeah, Cuba Gooding Jr. Me and my mom and my sister. I'm telling you, that was like our go-to. That was what we watched I think together. You might just be my perfect man. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, like we used to watch that all the time. But that's where our, that's what our topic is for today. This is Godly Relationships Part Three: Fight and Temptations. So the first thing that we're actually going to start off with is. What's your focal point and what are you feeding your mind? What is your focal point and what are you feeding your mind? And I think that in relationships, it is very, very important to have a focal point and to be very aware of what it is that you are feeding your mind, especially when you are practicing, again, celibacy. When you're practicing abstaining from sex and you're getting to know one, one another for who you really are and not for who we are physically, you get what I mean? It's important to understand why you're doing it. It's, an, it's important to have a key to focus on and it's important to be careful of what it is that you are feeding your mind. So we want to bring you uh, about two passages from the book where it talks about this. Um but first, I want to start off reading that right there. Yeah. You want to read that back? And then I'll go. So it here. says, obedience brings peace in decision making. If we have finally, firmly. if we have firmly made up our minds to follow the commandments, we will not have to redirect. Redecide. Oh my God, look at that. I made the mistake that you made earlier. <laughs> we will not have to redecide which path to take when temptation comes our way. James E. Foss. I like that a lot. Obedience brings peace in decision making. Obedience brings peace. Um, but the passage, it goes on and it says that, so you've embraced the idea of the way you've seen the light, getting your head clear and getting your life in order so God can bless you means first giving up sex. Good for you. It's a proud move. Taking back your power. Too bad you're miserable, right? And a lot of us, you know, and I love that he put that in the book is because a lot of us do, do think that our life is going to be miserable the moment that we give up sex. Like, oh my mm -hmm. God, then what is it to live for? What is it to do? You know, like there's nothing, you know, that it's we can do outside going. of that. Exactly. There's so much that you can do in a relationship. It's, it's for me, it's the same thing about like even being in Christ, right? So it's just like, when people come into God, they feel like, oh my God, like I got to give up this. I got to give up that. I got to give up that. And it's just like, oh my God, it seems like this, this walk is going to be so mm -hmm. boring and life is just going to be so boring, but it's not really the, the actual truth or facts about it. Right. People have to understand that there are so many other things that you can do rather than living your life, going to the club every day, drinking every day, partying every day, smoking weed or whatever it is that you used to do when you were living in the world. It's so many more things, so many things that you can do even in Christ. And it's so many more things that you can do in a relationship outside of having sex. And that's where date nights come in. That's where going out and doing things together. You get what I mean? Um, like having day trips, going somewhere, uh, hiking trying new things, you know, creating new experiences, new moments and stuff like, like that. There's a, there's like a, <laughs> like yo, there's, there's a lot. Hunts, there's a clue <laughs> one, clue two, and clue three type of things. There, but yeah, there, there is. is. They know, they know you watch. All right. There's a lot. There's a lot that you can do. So I love that he brought that up because it, like I said, again, a lot of people buy into the idea. The moment I give up sex, the moment we give up intimacy and intimacy is so broad. It's so broad. Mm -hmm. Intimacy intimacy is not just sex. It could be defined as a lot of things. Yes, it can be. Is you spending quality time together. You get what I mean? Is you taking out time to get to know each other. You know what I mean? Each other's mind. What makes each other tick? You know, what makes mm -hmm. each other happy? Intimacy is so broad. So again, I love that he brought that up. Too bad you're miserable, right? Maybe that's overstating it, but you're thinking about sex a lot, aren't you? Most of your friends are still having it and talking about it. You're trying to be strong, but your body is... Craving sexual satisfaction. You're used to pursuing sex when you want it. So, uh, what is that? Kurt telling a drive to call that friend with benefits or hook up with an ex is tough. You know this is the right thing for you, for your life. But, man, temptation is everywhere and staying strong is brutal. That's staying right. strong is brutal. Again, Smart. it's about what you are feeding your mind. What you're feeding yourself, what you're giving into. When he talked about it, you got to be careful of like me. Okay, like, and I go to work and I'm going to be honest. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'll play around and I'll I'll get into the conversation sometime. I'll talk about certain things. But you have to be careful what you're giving into. You have to be careful what conversations you're allowing yourself to have, especially when it's coming about sex. 
You get what I mean? Because if you're in a place where you're trying to stay pure, you're trying to stay focused, you're trying to stay committed, and you allowing yourself, and one thing that's so funny, babe, is this like when, like how you said, when you stop having sex, you start thinking about it the more. more. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because it's just like when you're in this place, I don't want to talk about sex. I don't want to watch nothing that, have, that, got, that got to do with sex. I don't want to do none of that. But it seems like it's like that's when it comes on the most. Everybody want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's so funny that that happens. But it's about what you allow yourself to do in I that situation to entertain. Are you going to entertain it? Are you going to give it to it? Or are you going to say, you know what? I'm going to stand my ground. I'm not going to have this. Shit. I'm not going to feed it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times what you feed is what grows. Gross. And what you starve, it dies. Mm -hmm. That's so true. You like that, right? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know what's crazy, though? Because you were reading that. And the last sentence says, temptation is everywhere. And staying strong is brutal. I think what people need to understand is that, again, whether you're a believer or not, temptation is going to be there. The temptation to fall is always going to be there. But I think it's about that mindset, again, mm -hmm. that, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? Like, is this worth it? Is this momentary pleasure? Because that's the thing. Sex, masturbation, anything like that is momentary. That that mm -hmm. momentary uh, moment of release. Mm -hmm. So after that release is done, it's just like, you're like, okay, like, yeah. was it really worth that? Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think um, understanding that is definitely important because I think a lot of people think just because people are believers, you don't mm -hmm. get horny or you don't want to have sex or you don't want to be intimate. It it has no boundary, whether you're a believer or not. Yeah, you're right. So because you do, mm -hmm. <laughs> I do, so we, I do. So we getting do. that out the way. <laughs> that that whole um, that whole uh, what is it called? It's like when people think that it's, that you can't. Mm -hmm. It's like that stigma of you can't because you're Christian. Because there's a lot of like labels that you can't do this because you're Christian. You can't do this because you're Christian. And there was a question here. Um, it says, how do you feel about the type of music and TV you watch influencing your decisions and your walk with Christ? Mm. That's, uh, That's uh, let me leave it alone. I forgot to say it. What I love about that, um, if you go back, mm -hmm. and it's funny you wrote that. Uh, mm -hmm. or Yeah, it's funny wrote you wrote that. that. Yeah. So what's funny about that, I talked about it in part two, right? Um, I was telling about how I used to watch this show called Shameless. And Shameless, it was a lot of sex scenes. Yeah. Like in the earlier seasons of it, it's a lot of sex scenes. And I remember um, I was in a place where like I was really struggling a lot with pornography and masturbation. And I remember my mom used to always tell me, Darius, God is calling you away from that. God is calling you away from watching stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, calling you away from the music that you listen to and stuff like that and God is calling you away from these things and I remember like I never thought like okay something like that could have an effect on me mm -hmm. but after I would watch it then my mind would go there then next thing I know I'm turning on porn and I'm masturbating you get what I mean or I'm wanting to go have sex or I'm hitting mm -hmm. somebody up you get what I mean and having phone sex or whatever the case may be and so you have to be very careful with what it is that you are allowing yourself to listen to to watch and again as we talked about what is your focal point and what are you feeding your mind it's all about what you feed yourself mm. if you feed yourself sex guess what your body's going to crave it you're going to crave it whatever you feed your mind you're going to want to do it even especially in a place of you practicing not doing it i'm mm. telling you it's very 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 important the thought comes about even more and even even in in episode two when we were discussing mm -hmm. like our weaknesses and our struggles mm -hmm. and i had said you know like i never struggled with that mm -hmm. so the desire or like the hormones were never really something that i battled with but now it's different like mm -hmm. i battled it more and i'm just like is it is this is this like temptation like mm -hmm. this is the devil playing with me or is it like my human anatomy? Mm -hmm. Like you never know, but I feel like the enemy also likes to bring up tactics just to see if you fall and to see if you're really about that life. If mm -hmm. you're really gonna stay committed to what you made mm -hmm. that vow to God. Cause I think a lot of us say, God, you know, I promise you I'm not gonna do this. God, mm -hmm. I promise you I'm not gonna do that. But then we fall into that temptation. And then after that, we're just like, okay, all we did was give God empty promises. Yeah. Meanwhile, he gives us things in fulfillment. He gives us things in, in, in its entirety. So yeah. it's like, why would we, you know, half butt guy, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, nah. didn't, I couldn't find another replacement. I it's couldn't. all good. I feel you. I feel you. Trust me. I do. I feel you. The second the second um, part that I wanted to give y'all was, they said on page 94, babe. Uh, it says, see where we're coming from. Sexual temptation sneaks up on you and catches you when you're weak. Mm. Which, let's face it, is pretty much whenever you're breathing and awake. I'm telling you, it's the truth. 
It's the truth. The human body is always craving sex or touch or feel or, you know, another human. It's always craving it. You get what I mean? Even when you, there's some people that think about it more than others. I will say that. Mm -hmm. You have some people where their mind's just not there. You get what I mean? And they mind may be in other things. They may struggle in different areas. You get what I mean? And but think about makeup and everything. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next? About? What's the next sale in Sephora and Ulta? This is not a paid. This is not a paid commercial. But if you guys want to sponsor Project yeah. Gatto, you are more than welcome. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> but it says, <laughs> it says when you're weak, let's face it. Um, uh, which is pretty much whenever you're breathing in awake, temptation will fit it. Thinking moves. That's good. Work flirtations, having contact with exes, pornography, you name okay. it. In practicing the weight, one of the goals is to create a lifestyle that acknowledges temptation by putting as many safeguards as possible in place. And I, and, and I love that it says safeguards. Safeguards are not excuses. Come on. Safeguards are not excuses for you to mess up and to, you know what I mean, to a say, well, or just exactly a justification. No, putting safeguards in is that I know if I do this. I'm a fall. I know if I do that, I'm a fall. I know if I give into mm -hmm. this, I'm a fall. Just like when we talked about uh, one and two, and we'll continue to bring it up. When we first uh, met each other in person, I told her, I said, I'm not going to kiss you intently because I know myself. If I allow myself to begin tongue kissing you and to kiss you intently mm -hmm. like that, then we're going to end up having sex. You get what I mean? And I, and I, I'm just saying, God, I, I, I have the way you do Okay. God, his, <laughs> his limit is kissing right where some other people have more you know they have more self-control mm -hmm. anyway i'm just saying not everybody that. that's yes. how we do that's what we do <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. I have my petty moment, my God. Anyways, like I said, I know I knew for me, yes. I knew for me kissing, that was a safeguard. So I had to put a safeguard in place. You yes. this is where we stop. That's what a safeguard is. We don't go past this point. You know what I mean? We don't go past this point because if we do, it could possibly, let me say it like that so you feel better. It could possibly lead, lead to, to something. Some, there okay. We go. Okay. So, yeah. Jeez. But, I no, promise no, no, no. you I was being but humble in the what? most wait, humblest way wait. ever. <laughs> you know what? But this brought such, such a good point about though, mm -hmm. because even though I don't agree with the boundary or I don't agree with that limit because we both have different limits, like we said. I respected it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, again, like I don't agree, but I respect mm -hmm. it. So I feel like relationships should have that healthy balance. So if that person's not willing to respect it, mm -hmm. they ain't the one, sis. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, what she said. But like, uh, yeah, so it's it's the safeguards. And then another thing that I like what they said is that um, is that temptation, and this is so true, again, it will fit in any pocket that you allow it to fit into. Anywhere that it can get in, it will get in. And again, that comes a lot of times is what's accessible to us and what's mm -hmm. fed to us, be it the internet, be it social media. You get what I mean? TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, fed to us and we're giving into it. Then guess what? We're giving room for it to grow. And even if you're not, and, and what's funny about that is just like, let's use her for example, right? So if that's something she doesn't struggle with, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're a person that's like her, you don't struggle with that, right? I haven't struggled with that in my life, that I like that, right? As far as watching certain things, mm -hmm. listening to certain things, and falling into places that you have never fell into before, you will be so shocked how quick that spirit overcomes you. Because all mm -hmm. it does is, all it, all it is is you opening the door. It's easier to mm -hmm. fall into bad habits than it is to fall into good habits. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that a lot of us should acknowledge. Mm -hmm. um, because, again, like, that's I never it. struggled with certain <laughs> things. It's all right. Baby. You're going to knock me out. We're going to go across the couch. <laughs> like... You, you made me lose my train of thought. You said some of us will fall into certain things. Like, it's easier to fall into a bad habit than yes. it is, you know, to fall into a good habit. There we go. There we go. What else? I'm sorry. What else did you want to say? This is <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the power of one live, y'all. I'm, I'm joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Mike, I'm, just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. You All losing right. all that work. <laughs> all right. Uh, anyway, so the second thing that we're going to talk about as we move on uh, with the topics um, is it was a quote that they said in here is, is just this once. Um, yes. The will to hold on to your vow while being Hold on to your vow while this, this. It says, believe it. We feel you. We fought the natural desire for more than a year. It's right there. Mm -hmm. For more than a year 
from the time we started dating to the time we were married. Some days were better than others, but staying celibate was never easy. We were in love and we were attracted to each other. Very, very attracted. Sometimes the sexual chemistry was so hot that we simply couldn't be in the same room together and keep our commitment to celibacy. That's okay. Sometimes wisdom means knowing when you're not strong so that you don't have to be strong. It means seeing that a situation has the potential to pack some serious sexual tension and changing your plans. It means not testing your willpower when you know it's not uh, at its strongest. It means knowing that when you wear that dress and he wears that suit, you can't keep your hands off each other. So you wear something else. And a lot of us may look at it like, yo, that's so silly. Like, I mean, she can wear whatever she want to wear or he can wear whatever he want to wear. And I'm not moved by it. It's the little things. Oh. It's definitely the little things. I think this definitely goes <laughs> with that. And how, you know, us women can dress. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I understand we have certain areas of us, right, that we like to accentuate or whatever. But I feel like when you're, like, in a really serious place, it's just, like, you leave things to the imagination, especially when you're in this process. Like, mm -hmm. it's so much better. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and I'll bring that up. That's another thing too. Um, that I remember I told you about me and my mom had this conversation. She was like, Darius, look at her page. And what is it that you notice about her pictures on her page? And obviously I didn't go right into it, but I was just like, I was trying to think. And she was like, she doesn't show her body. You get what I mean? She doesn't show cleavage. You know what I mean? She doesn't show her body. You get what I mean? And I'm just like, yo, that is so crazy because a lot of women, you know what I mean? That they, they, they show their body because they feel that that's the way that's going to attract the man. And again, I'm not throwing no, no shade, no, no shade. none, none, none. I'm just being honest. You get what I mean? This is why society is the way that it is because it tells you as long as you post a picture, I don't care what your body size is or whatever mm -hmm. like that. Big women are desirable as well. You know what I mean? Just like how, the, what you call it? The Barbie dolls, they're desirable too. You get what I mean? <laughs> At the bad. end of the day, it don't matter matter when you post in a picture you are desirable to somebody out there you get what i mean and and when it when you on your page and you feel like you don't need to do that it leaves what you just said it leaves room for what was the word for the imagination for the imagination it gives you something to, to think about in a sense because it's just like everybody could show a picture let's be honest mm -hmm. of their butt and their boobs anybody could do that yeah. but when you kind of cover up and you're just like i respect myself enough because mm -hmm. I guess when you get to a certain point in maturity, you're just like, I don't want to reach that type of person. Because you you tend to attract mm -hmm. what you put out. Yeah. And I think once we start understanding that, we'll understand the type of men and the type of women we are, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like accepting in our lives. Because mm -hmm. if you're putting out a certain thing, you're going to get that right back. Right. If you're accepting certain things, you're going to get that right back. Mm -hmm. So if you're tolerating nonsense, mm -hmm. it happens. Yeah. But that just, that just this once... Mm -hmm. That's going to be good. Yeah. So it says that we did all that, but we definitely <laughs> had moments when it would have been so simple to play the just this once game and surrender to what we were feeling, but mm -hmm. we did it. We wanted to remain in control. We wanted to see if we could do what others deemed impossible. Simple. We wanted to see if there was really something to be gained by waiting. What I love so much about the just this once and it just, for me, it constantly goes back to like mm -hmm. the pornography and the masturbation, right? You'll say to yourself, all right, I'm going to just do it just this once, just to mm -hmm. scratch this niche. You get what I mean? Like just to get this, you know, feeling out the way, I'm going to just do it this once. Yep. It's a lie. There is no such thing as just this once when it comes to sex in any form. There is no just this once at all because just this once turned into just this like next time. twice, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and you just count it as long as you want to count it. But it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going. So you can feed into the notion of mm -hmm. it's just going to be this once. And it's going to keep happening. And it, Exactly. It's just going to keep happening. So we want to encourage you to not allow yourself to feed into this. The biggest thing that you have to know about this is it's about submission. Mm -hmm. Are you going to submit and fully submit to the vow that you have given to God, given to yourself and given to one another? Or are you just going to simply give in anytime temptation arises and you find yourself in that moment when you're horny? You find yourself in the morning in that moment when, you know, your body going through some, you know, changes. Yeah. Yeah, and you're feeling like, yo, you know, something need to happen. Are you going to give in or are you just going to keep going? You get what I mean? Like, to be honest with you. And so we want to encourage you to stay committed and stay submitted to the vow that you have given, again, to yourself, to God, and to one another. 
not only that, it's the validation part. Like, mm -hmm. validate the feeling. Validate the, the fact that you're human. Like, your human anatomy, you're mm -hmm. going to get horny. Your hormones are going to be raging. Yeah. But, again, it's validating it, accepting what it is, and then moving forward from it. Find something to entertain and to replace. Because this is the thing. That's like you going on a diet, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, okay, you know, I'm going to cut out all this. And then, at the end of the day, you end up miserable because you never replaced it with something else. So, if say, for instance, like rice. Like, mm -hmm. I changed my whole, when I was doing keto, I did like regular rice, Hispanic rice, and then I changed it over to jasmine rice because it was healthier, right? It was a healthier like substitute. When you kind of like substitute things that, you know, how do, that you really like for mm -hmm. something else, the taste is not great at first right? because you're used to something else. The taste is unfamiliar, but then you start getting used to it and you're like, oh, you know what? This could be my new normal. Now I look at it and I'm just like, you know what? I don't even like Spanish rice. Anymore, I like jasmine rice. Yeah. And you should know that because I bought it last night. Yeah. What's that say? That's so true. It says, that's so true. Once that you open that one. door. Uh, it said, that's so true. Once you open that door, it's difficult to close it again. It's why my husband and I got married young. But God definitely blessed us after being obedient. You see, and that's crazy, Sandy. Um, Thank you for bringing that up. Because we spoke about, even in the beginning, about the power of obedience. Mm -hmm. And how obedience is so much better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Like, at the moment, you can be, like, in your hormones. You're like, yo, like, I just really want to do this. And then you get home. After you kind of like successfully fulfill that mission, you're like, yo, like I did really good. I'm proud of myself. Like I didn't give in. Like that feeling, I think, overweighs and outweighs that release that you would have had at that moment. Because mm -hmm. you're just like, God, like I really, I'm really committed to this. And that's another thing, you know, Sandy brought up with getting married young. And um, a lot of people are getting married early, especially you see that more in like the church setting because it's like they always say it's better to get married than for you to fall into sin. Yeah. And then you end up a lot of people, and I don't want to say you end up, and I want to be very careful with what I say because there's still people that you know are together. Yeah. But a lot of people end up in divorce because they never really loved each other or got to know each other like with substance mm -hmm. before they had sex. It was almost mm -hmm. as though like I'm horny, you're horny, we can get it on, and then at the end of the day, if we gotta get married, we gotta get married, mm -hmm. and then. You know, we have to be careful and mindful of what we're feeling again yeah. and what we're falling. Um, and we, we always talk about personal experiences. Yeah. Um, so that's what I love about our relationship is that we're able to once it's just like, you're like, oh, I'm going to entertain this person just this once. Mm -hmm. And then that just this once turns into again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And you find yourself in a toxic pattern that you never found yourself in before. Mm -hmm. And it's because it's like that, that enemy line. It's just like, mm -hmm. yo, we're just going to do this this once. Nobody <laughs> knows. And then it's like, again, and again. And then you find yourself in a toxic place where you're just like, dang, like, I really messed up. Yep. So beware of the just this once. Because that mm -hmm. just once could end you in a just forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a baby. With a and, soul tie, I'm telling you. a soul tie and a you. whole lot of other things. And STDs, we talked about that in part yes. two, I believe. Yes. Uh, just this once, you're taking a risk with your life. You get what I mean? You could be taking a risk with your life. And then also, too, what I love so much is what they talk about so much in this book, Bay, is that they talk about how they always stay focused on the point. And this even goes back to what's your focal point. They stay focused on the point of what God was promising Doing them. Yeah. And they didn't want to mess it up. They they didn't want to um they didn't want to you know uh what is it discard sabotage or it. sabotage yeah. what it was that God had promised them. It's the same thing for us, right? Yeah. So we know what God had pro has promised us. We know the word over our lives. Somebody said, "Hey, tuned in late." We're actually reading the weight from Devon Franklin and Megan Good. So um. We, we know the promise that God has, you know, Giving put over our life and stuff like that. And so that's our same driving force. And this is so crazy that we actually read in this book because their story is so much like our story. Yes. You get what I mean? We don't know them personally, but their story and the same thing that they're going through and they're talking about in this book is something that we are enc encountering right now right now in this time in our relationship you get what mm -hmm. i mean and so we just i'm grateful for this book me too but I'm you grateful you, for this book me too i'm grateful for you too yeah <laughs> you funny as that. but one thing that i really love that you just said is like the focal point like mm -hmm. if we get back to that we really think of like when you're in a place when you're really with someone that you really care about mm -hmm. your end goal 
should be your focus. Yeah. Like, if our end goal is marriage, how, how are we going to get there? Yeah. Like, what steps do we have to take? I'm a step-by-step -step person. I'm a little, you know. Step-by-step. Step. Step step step. So, I need to see step-by-step step what I need to do. So, it's like following instructions and hearing the voice of God as you go. Mm -hmm. And what I love about them is that they're so honest about it. Like, they're saying, you know, there were nights where it got hot and steamy. There were nights where, you know, we wanted to give in. But the, the, the power to really, like, like stick to that vow with God was mm -hmm. overtaking that temptation. Yeah. So, and that's that's definitely like you said our story. Like it, you guys can imagine, like you guys are a lot of people are women that are on here. <laughs> like you know, and you guys follow our journey, like the romantic dinners, and you know he's so romantic. Uh, and his little scavenger, like, like it would it that. would make any woman be like, wow, like you know, like I, I I'm really falling for this person, like just this once, and then bam. You ain't falling for me just no once. What? Okay, yeah, just for once. For life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it is just for once. For life. life. <laughs> I mean, every letter. In every word. Who? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move on. Uh, So the next thing is, I love this. When we was reading this, we, you know, kind of zoned in on, on this a lot. Mm -hmm. But the danger zone. The danger zone, things that trigger lust. Starting on page uh, 93, you're going to read these two. You want to read one of them? No. <laughs> Y'all, I'm trying. I'm trying to get her to read. I don't know why this woman don't like reading. But I like to read, but I like to read by myself. I don't like reading aloud. But you know what? I'm gonna. I'm. I'm about to be very submissive. I'm gonna show my submissive side. I'm gonna read one paragraph. You read the next one. For example, what if you're dating someone and he or she dresses for an evening out in something incredibly provocative? And I wanted to read it because you can't say provocative. <laughs> Hey, look, we was reading this earlier, and I kept saying pro back, pro act, pro act. He I couldn't like read the, the word, word pro back. I thought, I, you know what? We had, <laughs> let's, let's, let's study this. Pro yeah. back. Say provocative. <laughs> Provocative. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got to spend hours being hot and bothered by how sexy your date looks. You might even start thinking about how good he or she looks without the clothes. That's a danger zone. That's a danger zone. Ask yourself. I'm for real. When you're in a relationship and you're dating somebody, ask yourself what's a danger zone. You get what I mean? Like, there's certain ways that Jossie will look at me like, yo, don't do that. Mm, don't do that. That's just my eyes. Boy. Nah, I'll be like, yo, don't do that. Like, don't you do. Don't do I'm, it. I'm a Pisces. I just look. Oh, my Jesus. Okay, anyways, <laughs> but it's like knowing the danger zone. The danger yes. zone is, is like, you know, when you in a place or an area that's restricted, that, and it's mm -hmm. like that, eh, 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 that alarm go off, like, nah, we're not supposed to be here. Know your danger zone. Not only that, I, th I think like us women, we know. We kn <laughs> Listen, let's not, we're not going to sugarcoat this. Us women know. Us women look at ourselves in the mirror, we're like, yo, like, my butt look big or my boobs look great. I'm just, I'm just speaking, I'm speaking how it's it is. All good. So it's just like you you know these things. So if you're like, dang, like if I'm looking at myself like that, imagine what the opposite person's gonna look at me like. And because again, you don't see yourself like other people see you. So I'm just saying, look yourself in the mirror before you go out, and ask yourself what is it that you want to present that night. Do you want to be classy and reserved, or you want to be sexy and out there? Mm hmm. So, it says, another one is when you or someone in your so circle is in an emotional turmoil. And this one is going to be good. Mm. And just needs someone to, to be, be with. with. You know how it goes. A fight or breakup. Tears. A call asking, could you come over for a while? The enemy is working. The trap <laughs> is being set. So, you fall into it if you want to. <laughs> now... <laughs> If you and this other person have no physical attraction to each other, you're probably safe. But if you do, whether you're the crying caller or the one riding to the rescue with the ice cream and tissues and the condoms, and they say condoms, but I'm just saying, because you know, watch out. I'm saying some dudes, bro. I'm, a, I'm just being real. Some dudes, when they're in that situation, they be like, yo, let me go ahead and cop the condoms real, real quick. quick because, you know, she <laughs> cried on the show. You know, I'm going to try to slide in with, get in while I fit in. You get what I mean? But no, watch out. Vulnerable, lonely people just want someone, someone to, to hold, hold them. them until that holding turns into something else. 
Squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> but no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, like, we're talking no, truth, so. It's, it is the truth. So you have to know your danger yes. zone. And you have to know, like I said, things that trigger lust. Mm -hmm. If you're not strong enough and you know that, especially, like I said, a lot of people, mm -hmm. it's, it's premeditated. It's premeditated. People gonna go over there and they they already got in their mind that you know what I'm about to, I'm about to try to smash. smash I'm about to try to do something you know what I mean mm -hmm. like some people have pre premeditated thoughts yep and you have to know that so if you find yourself in a vulnerable place I'm not saying that you can't call somebody you get what I mean but keep it on the phone you know what I mean don't don't invite them over you get what I mean don't invite them not okay let me not say that because that may come off wrong yeah face that okay so invite them over but Know who, know who you're inviting over because, like I said, some people you can be sexually attracted to, and you know that you're sexually attracted to them. But then you got some people where you just like, I ain't sexually attracted to this person, and I know I can call Nothing them, happen. and you know they can come over and they can be with me, they can sit with me, and I just know that that's just what it's gonna be. You get what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Like not only that, a lot of a lot. Let's be honest, and I'm gonna be so real. I'm gonna keep it so real because you know. Please do. <laughs> so. <laughs> So us women, us women, we have different, you know, techniques um, of not falling into temptation. Like, you know what? I'm wear my granny drawers. <laughs> Let's be honest. Them things come off too. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the time, a lot of women are strong enough. Um, wear some ugly, ugly ones. <laughs> um, and don't do other stuff just so that, you know, you know in your mind, like, don't go there. Don't mm -hmm. go there. Don't don't fall there. And that's the thing, too, like, when it says the someone to be with that, you know, that hit me hard, is that we need to realize that when, you know, because it, it emphasized breakups. It emphasized so many different things. You're in a very vulnerable state mm -hmm. after a breakup. You're in a very vulnerable state. You're not thinking or rationalizing anything. You're not rationalizing any type of, like, scenario nothing mm -hmm. you're just like you know what i'm just gonna get it done i don't care who you are i'm like whatever and the thing is comfortability is dangerous mm -hmm. because you fall into familiar ground you're just like oh you know like we're friends mm -hmm. so we're just gonna be friends mm -hmm. and then that just friends turns into mm -hmm. just someone that friends you're just cuddling benefits. with you know <laughs> and sometimes it don't even go that far you just cuddling you just cuddling you just cuddling i'm not gonna lie my past i i just like to cuddle like don't come don't come next to me but i just like to cuddle mm -hmm. but, but you gotta be careful with that mm -hmm. that's someone there's yeah. someone to just be with because then with that one once they're done being lonely mm -hmm. it's kind of like they use abuse mm. you for those moments yeah and then once they're in a stable place it's like they tr they throw you out like trash yeah. like you yeah. didn't matter to them and i think that a lot of women and men mm -hmm. struggle with that it's just like you know what i was in your life for this period of time and that was good yeah i was in your life for this i'm good for this yeah. but i'm not good for this and yeah. it's just like beware of people and individuals you know while you're you're very vulnerable that yeah. you know use you for what you can do to the do, do for, for them, them and mm -hmm. to them let's yeah. be honest yeah um and then after they're good after they have their release it's just like i'm not calling you for three four weeks and then i'll call you three four weeks when i need a booty call like know where you are at and know who you are in people's lives and people don't lie to you like you have to pay attention to patterns i think if people pay attention to patterns you will be driven to a more successful relationship because people don't lie and their words definitely do betray them eventually. Yeah. And it's funny that you actually hit on that because I was going to go deeper in that about the danger zone thing because like how you flipped it. Mm -hmm. It's not only about, you know, the danger zone, like how they were saying about, you know, knowing what obviously can get you there and take you off. It's about knowing how to restrain yourself. Like how she said, don't be in a vulnerable place trying to use people. Mm -hmm. Don't do it because you're damaging somebody that don't deserve to be damaged. You're hurting somebody that don't deserve to be hurt all because mm -hmm. you can't get your way with the person that you want to get your way with. And you're lonely. And you're lonely and you're desperate mm -hmm. and you're tempted. You get what I mean? And, and, and just to be honest, it happens on both sides of the spectrum. Absolutely. Men do it. Girl. Women do it. You get what I mean? And we have to be careful with that because we are playing with people's emotions. Yep. We know it's like being with somebody knowing I, I don't want to be with that person. You but, know you don't want to be with yeah, the Yeah, but so. hey, look, the sex is good, so I'm going to be uh -huh. with them. Or this is good, so I'm going to be with them. We have to stop using people in relationships, you know, or whatever situationships you find yourself in. Mm -hmm. You have to really allow yourself to be mature enough to say, you know what? I, I, I know I ain't going to want this person after this booty call is over, so let me not even bother them. You know, I was gonna say booty call yourself, but then don't do that. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, uh, sound like I'm. I'm encouraging. You know, masturbation, but I'm just saying. At the end of the day, don't use nobody. Go to go to God in prayer. 
You go heard? Take a, go take a cold shower. Yeah, sit down and cry to your cry, cry. Eat the ice cream. Watch the movie. You get what I'm saying? Like, no, for real. Like, stop using people. You're damaging. You're damaging people along stop. the way. I don't. I don't think you think about it in the moment. Mm -hmm, you don't because you're so engulfed in your emotions. You're yeah. so engulfed in your loneliness. You're so engulfed mm -hmm. in your present feeling yeah. that you don't think about the future. You don't think about if I drag this person along, what hopes am I giving them? Because that's the thing. A lot of people will romance someone that yeah. they have no intentions on being with. You know, like, let me tell you something. If you know that the person is not the one, whether male or female, sit down because the person behind you is looking towards that way. Yeah. Because guess what? If you're not someone's type, you are somebody else's type. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that a lot of, you know, women and men need to understand is that not everybody is going to find you attractive. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. I had to because learn that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll just say, hey, look, it's true. You're not everybody's You're not type. Everybody's cup of You're tea. not everybody's type. But you are someone's cup of tea. And that's the thing. When you have people that are willing to respect you through and through, mm -hmm. I think you'll learn to weed out who is for you and who's not. not for you. And yeah. that's one thing that I love about Michael Todd, and I will continue to repeat that, is how he talks about sex. That it's great. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Sex it sex is God created sex, but it is in the containment of a marriage, the yeah. sanctity of a marriage of covenant. Because we if we look at the old days, how you know it was technically it wasn't like a big wedding. Once you mm -hmm. did the deed, once you had sex, guess what? You was married. Yeah. That's that's a covenant relationship. So if you take one minute to just do a self-analysis, how many people have you been married to and you don't even have a ring on your finger? Mm -hmm. Really think about that. How many people have you been in relationship with that you are not married to, that you have soul ties now with, you know? And that's something, again, that we can can kind of point out that you don't have to stay with soul ties. The power of deliverance is so real, and God can deliver you from those soul ties because that's the thing. If you really think about it, soul ties are things that you pick up when you're putting something down. Mm -hmm. So it's just like you wake up in the morning, you're like, I'm depressed. Guess what? The dude you was just with last night was suffering and battling depression. Now you got it on you. Why? Mm -hmm. Because your soul's intertwined while you yep. are having sex. Mm -hmm. So just be aware of those red mm -hmm. flags. And when you ask that question, a lot of people put up their church fingers. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> They're like, gotta go. Gotta go. No, I'm, just, I'm joking. It's okay. <laughs> Y'all can watch an army play. <laughs> Uh, so again, it's about knowing what situations the danger zone is all about knowing what situations to put yourself mm -hmm. in or not to put yourself yes. in. And there were some uh, some triggers that they kind of like, you know, mentioned on 99 and 100 uh, that I wanted to kind of share with y'all. Uh, because a lot of us, we kind of go through this. You get what I mean? And we don't look at these as triggers. We don't look at these as danger zones. We don't look at these, you know, as, as, as things that are important, but they're very important. So the first thing is late nights. Movie night on the couch in somebody's apartment is fun, but it can lead to more. Let's be honest. And we'll be honest. Me and Babe been watching movies in, in the living room, but I've been falling asleep every single night. It's snoring. Y'all that know me, hold on. Y'all that know me know I cannot stand snoring. So I was like, God, you know that he's the one because he's snoring in my ear and I just want to put a suck in his mouth. But it's okay because I love him through and through. But yeah, this, yeah. We have been, but also another thing that is good with that is that she don't sleep at my house. She sleeps at yep. my aunt's house. My aunt stay in the same community as me, but she sleeps at my aunt's house. She don't sleep at my house. And so it says late nights, movies, movie night on the couch in somebody's apartment is fun, but it can lead to more. And then when we also watch the movies, we ain't we we may like sit with each other, but we ain't kissing on each other and rubbing on, on each, other each other and touching on each other and stuff like that. We watching the movie. And like I said, well, she watching the movie, but I'm asleep. The but uh, watching you. emotional trauma. When you get in a fight with someone, get in trouble at work, or just feel bad, you're vulnerable and want comfort. Be careful. These are triggers. These is what leads you to those danger zone mm -hmm. places. This is what leads you to those places to where you start to hurt others. You start to use and abuse others as we just talked about. So be very cautious and careful of these things. The next one is intimate uh, contact. Be affectionate, but be mindful that if affection is making it difficult for you or the person you're dating to resist temptation, T. That's where we go when we're talking about the kissing and yeah. the touching. You get what I mean? And the putting body parts on each other and all people's boundaries and you have to respect them. Just like it said, be mindful. If that affection is not only difficult for you, don't just think about yourself. Yeah. Think about the other person. Another thing is alcohol. Drinking and celibacy probably isn't the best mix. Liquor reduces your inhabitate, inhabitants, 
Inhabitation? Inhabitation. Inhabitants. <laughs> uh, to make, it, it makes you more likely to do something. Inhibitions. Inhibitions. <laughs> I'm makes you more likely to do something you'll regret. If you're waiting, consider doing it sober. Either that or make the choice to not drink or drink minimally around the person you're dating. And if thing like that, Your you know the identity effect. changes you. That, ain't that right, Crystal? You have... <laughs> You, you know the effect that it has on you. And you have to be honest with yourself. I think back to times when I used to drink. I was never a, a huge drinker. But I knew when I drank, I knew what, what kind of mindset that put me in. You get what I mean? Like, it intensifies stuff. So, you have to be really, it's really careful wine with and that. spirits for a reason. Yeah. You go in getting wine, you come out with spirits. Mm -hmm. Sexting and Snapchat. This is funny. For, Wait, All right, let's yeah. try this again one more time. Attempt. Provocative text or video clips can send you over the edge if your willpower is wavering. Yes. And if anybody, you know, has a pass with Snapchat, you will understand why they mention Snapchat and sexting. Sexting people, sending them pictures of yourself. Half naked pictures. I don't care if your face cut out. You get what I'm saying? Sending pictures, it takes somebody there. It takes that person mm -hmm. to that place not only that you you feel like a lot of people a lot mm -hmm. of people that you snapchat you feel like the conversation is going to disappear mm -hmm. so you have that security and you mm -hmm. feel like oh well they're this per they can take screenshots y'all yeah. like be, <laughs> like be mindful no don't look at me i'm just joking <laughs> God, God, I'm, just a liar. I'm just joking but you have you have to be mindful because i think you know i i'm just thinking about like a lot of cases that I've seen and read about, like with with younger generation, where they're like, "Oh, like I'm talking to this person, we're in relationship," and you see the the Snapchat conversation, mm -hmm. and then next thing you know, it's an older person with a younger person, and there you go, you have a whole situation there because you think Snapchat disappears. Guess what? People can save and unsave, mm -hmm. and you don't know what that other person is doing on the other side of the phone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be very mindful of that. Yeah. And about minors having. Mean, Snaps. Like, watch this. But like like how yeah, she said, it's very true. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, like she said, it's very, it's very, very, very true. Protect protecting you at all costs. Yes. So, you know, to send in the text and stuff like that, it's okay to to send words um to your significant other. Like, but I don't if you marry. Yeah, if, if you marry. I'm about to say, God damn, if we don't do that. Marry. Shoot. Marry. I understand. But like, okay, like, yeah, so if you marry your significant other, you get what I mean? You want to see your boo a little cute text or whatever, like, now nah, we do do that. You see your little boo a little cute text or whatever like that, let them know you're thinking about you, you know, that you're thinking about them, that you love no, them or whatever like that, that you're beautiful. There's so many other ways that you can do it to make somebody mm -hmm. feel special and wanted and loved rather than just sending your body. Soon we'll have, you know, a special guest that will come on and she will speak about some um, dating tips. Huh? My mom. Oh, you funny. <laughs> so the next thing is travel. So hookups happen on the road. Hookups on the road can seem like they don't count. Kind of like calories from ice cream that you eat when nobody's watching. What? Of course, sex when you're on the road counts. Don't fool yourself. Now, sex on the road? Is he talking about sex while driving? I guess. <laughs> so it, it ain't like physical sex. I guess it's a different type of sex because you can't do that while you're driving. So you can do that while you're driving. If you marry. <laughs> yeah, if you marry. <laughs> if you marry, key point for everything. If you, you marry. are married. You're welcome, married couples. <laughs> so yeah, so those are some just some uh some trigger points that they yes. kind of listed in this book. Again, it's very, very important. It's good to understand what they're saying, and it's good to understand, you know, that they are meaning it in the best intent. But you got to know yourself. Again, you have yes. to know yourself. You have to know your triggers. You have to know what gets you there. You have to know the danger zones. You have to know your, like it said, what, the safe words what and all that stuff like that. You have to know those things because that's what's going to help you keep that commitment and keep that vow and stay true to it and not break it, even when temptation arises. The Bible says with every way of temptation that God will definitely make a way of escape. It's up to you whether you want to take it mm -hmm. or not. So moving on, the next thing we want to talk about is what's your commitment? And it's 96 and 97. What's your commitment? Um, I know for us, we talked about it. Our commitment is, is basically... Staying committed to the vow that we made yes. to each other, that we will wait until marriage. You know what I mean? To be able to cross that line. Um, so if y'all don't see us after we get married, just know. <laughs> <laughs> we out in the island, you know, <laughs> like crossing out the weight. <laughs> like it has arrived. 
<laughs> but uh, no, what is your commitment? Yes. Um, you, you, this is personal again. Um, mm -hmm. Everything that we're talking about is personal. You have to know what's, what's for yourself. Yes. At the end of the day, our commitment, like we said, our commitment is staying committed to God, staying committed to what God is doing in our lives so that we can get to the point to where we need to be. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this boldly, right? We're watching this show, Are You The One, right? I don't care whether sex is good or sex is bad. Yes. Sex does something. Yes. And when you have sex with somebody, it opens a door and mm -hmm. and it ruins the relationship. So you may, some people may, oh, sex don't ruin a relationship. Yes, it does. It does. Like I said, whether it's good or bad sex, it's going to ruin the relationship because now you open up a, 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 a box. You open up a Pandora's door, you box. open up Pandora's box and it opens up all the insecurities. It opens mm -hmm. up everything that was laying dormant in that place, in that person. And it opens up that box and now you see this person fully exposed. Not only that, mm -hmm. if you really think about it, if you're like... You will resort to that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a lot of people are in toxic relationships that you don't mm -hmm. even like the person. And you're just like, you know what? Like, we argue. Okay, let's go have makeup sex. You have to be careful with that mm -hmm. because, again, like, you're opening that door. You're opening that portal to literally, yeah, a very dark place. <laughs> but not only that, I think one thing, too, is, like, your thoughts Your thoughts become words. Your words become actions. That's another thing for, like, Snapchat, um, even, even stuff like this with temptation and all that other stuff, like, your, everything starts in your mind. Mm -hmm. Everything starts in your mind. And how you react to it is pretty much up to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, staying, uh, what's your commitment? Uh, reading the passage from the book, it says, Now when we get down to it, what tricks did we use to stay strong and remain celibate even when our bodies were screaming for sexual release? Mm -hmm. The most powerful tool for staying disciplined is in keeping your commitment is your faith in and love of God. As long as you're looking at God and you and you feel yeah. like I love God, I want to honor God, you know, I want to do this for God. It ain't. It's like it goes beyond you at this point. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're doing it for each other, but at the end of the day, we're doing this to be pleasing unto God. We're doing this so what God has set can come to fruition. This is what we're doing it for. So your love and your faith in God, it kind of overshadows the temptation as an act of obedience and to receive the fullness of what God has in store for you. You'll have an easier time avoiding sexual temptation. You'll have an easier time avoiding sexual temptation. And a lot of people say, well, I do think about God and I'm God. And yeah. I'm just being honest. You just get what I mean? Once. Just this once. Exactly. It resorts back to that mm -hmm. thing. Like, you know what, God, I love you. And I know you. And then another thing is, too, is be careful. Don't try to take advantage of God's grace. Yep. It's like, grace is not a permission slip to sin. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Understand that. So it's not about taking advantage of God's grace. But like you said, mm -hmm. when you focus on God, you got to take into account everything. If we were to mess this up and we were to give in to sex, we're forfeiting marriage. We're forfeiting children. We're forfeiting a ministry. We're forfeiting life that God has. Blessings. Exactly. Generational blessings. And guess what we're doing? We're just adding to a generational yeah. curse. That's all we're doing if we just give in. But again, staying focused and staying committed and staying driven and keeping your focus on God. This is why the Bible tells us to look to the hills from which come for your help because your help comes from God. It don't come from flesh. It don't. Your it don't flesh come from will flesh. fail you. Yes. Your but it comes be. from God. It's just as important that you take responsibility for yourself. Some people say, well, things just happen. Mm, things do just happen. But again, things happen. The only the only reason why things just happen is because you allow them to just yes. happen. And that's the honest to God truth. Yes. You, you have more will in certain areas of your life than you do in other areas of your life. And mm -hmm. that's just the honest to God truth. True. So that's a cop out. And it is. We let things happen. We let things happen if we're okay with them, even if we won't admit it to ourselves. Sometimes we're too ashamed to admit that I wanted it to happen. Yep. I wanted to or do you, it. Or you premeditated mm -hmm. it. Go ahead, Megan. Read. Mm -hmm. Megan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Megan now. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're reading this whole thing right here? Yeah, just her part of what she said because it goes with this. Okay, so she says, When I was 19, I struggled with celibacy. But what I really did was... I abdicate responsibility for my celibacy. I would say this man could be my husband. So that would make it okay. It so a lot of us mm -hmm. women, men, we feel like, you know what? This could be my potential spouse. Mm -hmm. So you know what? We can't get down. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're my potential. Be careful what you do with potential because potential mm -hmm. could lead you to destruction. Yeah. Or, well, I'm not going to be... In 
but I'm not going to initiate sex. So if it happens, it's not because I made it happen. Mm. <laughs> Try to put the blame on somebody else. It takes two to mm -hmm. tangle. That it means does. it takes two. So, but I knew that I was putting the responsibility on the other person and not taking ownership of my commitment. Again, that's so important is to acknowledge your wrongdoings. Acknowledge it. Take yeah. accountability. Accountability is one of the most powerful traits an individual can have. Why? Because you're able to admit when you are doing something wrong and you can correct it. Again, with episode two, we spoke about wise, like godly counsel, wise counsel. Make sure you surround yourself around people who are going to lead you in the right path. It says, finally, I said, this is not what the Lord has for me. I'm not going to go into another relationship trying to be celibate and then passively caving onto my commitment. I had to make the commitment, commitment that sex was absolutely off the table. Not halfway, off the table. All off, off the, the table. table. That means all type of sex. Okay, the crazy thing is that when I did that, God blessed me with someone who was celibate before I was. It's incredible how things can work out when we are true to what God true to God and to ourselves. When we're honest with ourselves mm -hmm. and we can validate the feelings that we have, whether it's hormonal, whether it's emotional, whether it's psychological, mm -hmm. when we can validate those feelings, we're able to progress and we're able to move forward. Not only that, what I love about what she says and going into accountability is that it takes two. It takes two. Mm -hmm. It takes two to keep commitment. It takes two to hold each other accountable because that's the thing. If I cannot depend on you when I am weak, mm -hmm. we have a problem because there's not a solid foundation. It takes two people to have that commitment to say, you know what? You know what, babe? I'm having a, a rough week or I'm having a rough time with this or, or this week has been hard. That person has to be strong. Like the opposite person has to be strong to mm -hmm. say, you know what? Let me hold the weight this week. Let me align myself more because that's like... Our hormones change all the time, mm -hmm. so you have to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. It takes I wanted to uh, touch this real quick. Somebody asked on TikTok. They said, what do you think about people who only talk about their feelings, don't listen to yours, and redirect every conversation to themselves? That sounds narcissistic. Simply put, I was about to say that they don't care enough about nothing but themselves. The thing is, again, like words, again, how we said before, mm -hmm. patterns. Words will definitely betray you. You can show with action sometimes, mm -hmm. but your words will betray you eventually in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you have to value yourself as a person right. um, and say, you know what? My time matters. I matter. What I have to say matters. My mm -hmm. feelings matter. And that's one thing. Once you start to acknowledge your value, the value of you mm -hmm. and you tax it, and you're like, you know what? I know what I'm working. I'm going to tax it. When you know that you're able to say, you know what? I'm not going to take less than what you're giving me. Cause that's the thing. People will only do to you what you allow them to mm -hmm. do. And if you allow them that space to disrespect, if you allow them that space, not to put you, you know, in your place, then unfortunately that's what you're going to get. Cause you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. That's true. So you have to be very mindful of that. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think I want to be very careful with how I word this, but again, mm -hmm. how we said, you know, you attract what you are putting out. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to make sure that you're putting more of that. This is what I want. Mm -hmm. And if you can't level up, you need to level out. Yeah. That's because right. at the same time, like, I think a lot of people have standards yeah. and you're like, you know what? I have a standard and I want this type of woman. I want this type of man. And since you don't find them right away or in your time, and you're like, they don't exist. Mm -hmm. And then the person <laughs> comes and you're like, wait a minute. Like for me, I'm going to be honest. You know, Darius is very vocal with how he feels and like, you know, he calls me beautiful. He's very affectionate. When you're used to not having that your whole life and you've been wanting it and then it comes, you're just like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Like it's real. It can exist. So for that, when you have standards, stay with your standards, mm -hmm. grab your standards and use them as a medal of honor. Like if you level up to this point and you reach meet my, meet my standards, then you're worthy of who I am mm -hmm. because not everyone is worthy of your time. Not everyone is worthy of the power of you. It's powerful. And I'm not just saying the power of him or the power mm -hmm. of me. The power of you, the one who's watching the, the, this episode, mm -hmm. is what you bring to the table is important. Know that if you know what you bring to the table, don't be afraid to eat alone. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to eat alone. That's facts. <laughs> That's definitely facts. Uh, and the last thing I'll say on that is that never make somebody like valid mm. never make somebody let's never let somebody make you feel that what you are feeling is not important or anything like that if somebody can sit and hear yep. you out or listen to you or make you feel important or make you feel that what you are saying is important or validate like how she said validate, validate what you it. are saying then at the end of the day that lets you know everything that you need to know they're no good for you 
it's if all, easier for you to walk away too. Yeah, it's, it should be easier. Be, let's say it should be because should a lot be. of times, even though we know it's easy, we still don't walk away. Yeah. You get what I mean? So uh, we're keeping on what's your, keep your commitment. You have to, again, know your triggers. And you mentioned this a lot, and I'll let you talk on that, is to know your why. Know your why, yes. And, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. You don't, you Before we go? go to the last one, now, oh, know okay. your why. So knowing why you started, mm -hmm. right? Knowing why you started. Knowing why you made this commitment. Knowing why you decided to either take abstinence or celibacy. Mm -hmm. Again, I just want to like rephrase that. So abstinence is like that I don't have a choice type mm -hmm. thing. Like I'm not in a relationship, so I'm not having sex. But celibacy is you making the intentional decision to yes. say I'm abstaining from sex yes. because it's for a reason. It's for a pur it's purpose driven. Yes. So my purpose or our purpose is to reach that place of marriage and say, you know what, we did it. We did this, you know, obviously mm -hmm. for our blessings. We did this for God to be in it. We did this to involve God. So that mm -hmm. is the decision to be uh, celibate. But one mm -hmm. thing too, babe, before we um, what's the other things that we're gonna talk about? The last thing on that was to know yourself, and there was something on page okay. ninety eight that I underlined, which I love what they said is so just don't rely on loving the lord and being mm -hmm. strong know yourself yes. it's just like though the when the bible says faith without works is dead, is dead. you yes. have to put in some action it's it does you no good to just have faith and just to say well god gonna do it so that i can just sit on this couch and i can just sit back and do nothing God going to handle it. No, you have to put some action behind it. And this is why when it says, don't just rely on loving the Lord and being strong. No. Okay. Love the Lord. Mm -hmm. Rely on God to give you the strength when you need it. But also when he give you the strength, don't fight it. Yes. You know what I mean? Don't give in anyway when God gave you the strength. No, know yourself. I'm in this situation like, dang, bro, I done, I done made myself to her house. Now I'm in a room. We sit on her bed. We mm -hmm. talking. We chilling. Like, God. Wisdom telling you, get up, get out of room, go into a more common area. You get what I mean? Or first and foremost, don't even be in her house. You get what I mean? Wisdom, it, it cries loud in the street. The Bible says it, it cries loud in the street, but no one listens. And wisdom would tell you, which is basically God telling you at the end of the day, don't put yourself in that situation. Mm -hmm. But, oh, I can rely so much that, you know, God got me. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. God got you. But when you're sitting on that bed and self says, hey, just give in again, just that once. You have to know yourself. It is very, very, very important to know yourself. And that's how you also know how good God is and how mm -hmm. merciful and graceful and how truly amazing God is that even when you're like you go and mm -hmm. you know that you're going to do it, he still provides a way of escape. A phone will ring. Mm -hmm. Hell, you forgot a condom. Like something <laughs> will happen that... You'll be like, dang, like, it'll make you think twice. And then you're like, dang, man. Like, like, the red light is And don't a, just go to raw. Go. Don't just go to raw, raw brothers. Because at the end of the day, like I said, STDs is real. <laughs> and Kids pregnancy, are real. Pregnancy is real. <laughs> but not only that, like, I think a lot of us, we need to understand that red flags or, like, red flags are there for a reason. Like, mm -hmm. we just... A lot of people tend to fly by them like, mm -hmm. that's not an exercise, that's a go. Yeah. No, a red flag is there for a reason, but God also gives you those exits. So even when you find yourself in those, because I, it's going to happen to people. You know, you're going to find yourself in those moments of temptation. Know that there's always mm -hmm. an exit out. If you get that call, you know that's God saving yeah. your life. If you get that, you know, one thing happening, you know that God, that's God saving your mm -hmm. life from something. So take that, heed the voice of God, and you know that the Holy Spirit will be talking to you like, don't go there, yeah. <laughs> don't go there, don't do it, it's just gonna happen again, it's that, that justice once, gonna be justice twice, so yeah. be, be mindful of that. Yeah, the next thing is going back to actually something you talked about was it takes two. Yes. It takes two. Again, you're in it together. It's not just a Jossie thing. It's not just a Darius yes. thing. It's it's a God thing ultimately, but it's, it takes both of us, us to put in the work. We both have to grow. We both have to make the changes that we need to make. We both have to level up. We both have to mm -hmm. hold ourselves accountable while holding one another accountable, not in a judgmental way, but in a way of love and compassion yes. and understanding and mercy and grace. We both have to take on the task at the yes. end of the day. And it's what I love so much about what they put in this book and how they both were so accountable in so many ways and this is how we do with one another we do hold each other accountable you get what i mean we talk to each other you know mm -hmm. what i mean she's not afraid to tell me when i'm wrong and vice versa you get what i mean and, and it doesn't have to be an argument you get what i mean I it don't have to be bashing or beating somebody down like no it don't have to be that a lot of times we think that we have to go to war in order for us to get our point across it's mm -hmm. not the truth 
is not the truth at all. So it takes two on page 95. It says you're spending a lot of private time together. That's torture, right? No. Remember, the two of us did this and it did feel like torture at times, despite our deep faith and commitment. Besides, even when even when waiting is hard, at least you're not in it alone anymore. And having a committed partner who will help you do it is is a real blessing yes. and it is true it's just like having a gym partner you get what yeah. i mean like you you're more likely to go to the gym when you got somebody to go with you i'm gonna be honest with you i don't like going to the gym i don't like working out i really <laughs> don't but if i had somebody that was in the gym with me like hey let's go brother help me i would probably be in the gym more to be honest with you now when i do go to the gym i go to the gym and i play ball more than anything but i haven't played ball in a minute but you get what i'm saying Having, like how she said, having that accountability partner is is so good. And it's so good when y'all can just be more than just in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Build a friendship. I promise you. Yes. Be able to talk to each other about anything, anything, like I said. Don't judge. Don't make somebody feel bad. And if you do, apologize. And if you do, man up to it, woman up to it. You get what I mean? There was one, there was one time I had asked her a question like, babe, do I, do I ever make you feel like I'm judging you or I'm harsh or I'm this when I, when I talk to you? And she was very honest with me. And it made me look at myself and not in a bad way, but it made me want to actually re like reevaluate that mm -hmm. and, and adjust myself. Now, when I talk to her, you get what I mean? I don't ever want to come off and make her feel like that she can't come talk to me or that, you know what I mean? That I'm judging her or making her feel bad about it. No. And I'm still learning. You get what I mean? I'm learning how to love her. I'm learning how to talk to her. You know what I mean? Because I'm so used to doing things a certain way that now I'm having to learn how to redo it all over again. You get what I mean? And so like, never be afraid again. Not only that, you, it, mm -hmm. it spoke about, like you spoke about being able to talk about anything. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that's important is when you have like that future goal in mind, mm -hmm. like you're just like the, the end is in the beginning. Like if our, if our focal point is marriage and God has affirmed, God has confirmed, God has like spoken, you know, like for me that one time, you know, like I have, I have a deep, dark secret, right, that I share with no one. Mm -hmm. And as I'm sitting on my bed, you know, I'll reshare that because a lot of people haven't seen that. But, you know, I sat on my bed and I was like, God, I was like, why are you speaking to me so heavily mm -hmm. on being open and vulnerable, you know, with Darius about, you know, this secret? And I'm like, God, like, it's like, it's something that is between me and God. And God told me literally, he's like, Jossie, if you really believe the word that I gave you, you know, you're going to have to do your part. See, mm -hmm. God will give you a word, but you'll have to move. Right. You know, that was good. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a little hard on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <You> <laughs> that one hit me in my face. <laughs> but, um, like, for me, I, I sat there and I was like, okay, you know, like, how am I going to bring this situation mm -hmm. about? Because, obviously, you know, what life does is that life brings shame. Life brings guilt. Life brings all these different type of emotions where you're right. just like, I can't tell this person this because this person's going to judge me. I can't tell this person this and this person's going to do this. Like, you want to make sure that. God has designated for you. And I said words to say, gave mm -hmm. me the explanation and how detailed I needed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I texted him and I told him, I said, listen, this is a situation. And there was no judgment. And that's how, for me, I knew. I was like, okay, like, I know that he's someone that I could see myself with because mm -hmm. you weren't judgmental. You weren't, mm -hmm. like, ridiculing me or you weren't judging me about, you know, a mistake that I made in that mm -hmm. moment. Because everybody makes mistakes. Some people live the mistakes in public while others live it in private. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I feel like a lot of people need to understand and I want people to evaluate their lives. Be very mindful of where you're putting your mouth because it could be you tomorrow. But yeah. not only that, you know, a lot of people are in deeper sin than those around them, but you'll pinpoint their sin to take it off of you. And that's mm. the power of projection. Mm. Like you will project what you're doing on somebody else that when the <laughs> heat comes off of you. Like mm -hmm. you have to be mindful of that because you're hurting people. You're 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 pretty much ridiculing people that make mistakes just as much as you. Like you mm -hmm. make mistakes just like me. Yeah. Maybe your mistake is a little bit different, but at the end of the day, a mistake is a mistake. And that's what we need to also understand is that we tend to categorize sin. Mm -hmm. and sin is all the same in God's eyes. Sin eye. is all the same. Like, the, the, the foot of the cross is even. So, mm -hmm. just because you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm having sex before marriage. Oh, like, you're a sinner. You're, you know, in a, in a, in a different sex relationship. Mm -hmm. Or you're... Um, fornicating you're doing this like all sin is the same murder is the same thing as adultery murder is the same thing as lying and the quicker mm -hmm. we understand that is the quicker we will stop being so judgmental 
on people. Yeah. So be mindful where you put your mouth because you can end up in that situation. Yep. And you want to be very, very mindful of that. Judge not, least she be judged. Yep. Uh, the next part on to end that off of the It Takes Two, it says that on page 98 and 99, it says that if you're dating someone steadily and you both agreed to wait, discuss how you're feeling in real time. Yes. Before you go out, and what I love is that me and Jossie, we do have these conversations. You get yes. what I mean? Like we and a lot of people, you know, you may look at it and, and think that it's funny or whatever like that, but like we do like like what I told you. <laughs> like what I told you. It's so funny. We talk about like temptation, right? We talk about like uh when you say something, and I'm gonna be honest with you, it seemed like when you say something, it seemed like the devil play on it more. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? We talked you about it something. earlier, right? It's like when you're not having sex, you think about it more and stuff like that, right? And so we were kind of talking earlier, her me, her, and my mom, we were kind of talking earlier about like uh like wet dreams or whatever mm -hmm. like that. And like uh like when men, you know, don't have sex for a while and then you're not releasing and stuff, like your body, it builds up, it builds up, it builds up to where, you know, sometimes even a man's test testicles can hurt because of yeah. the buildup that's still is blue ball you get what i mean and so it's just like it was so funny that i spoke about that then right before logging on i experienced it and i'm like yo like what the heck is going on you get what i mean and yeah. to be honest it wasn't nothing going on i was literally asleep you get what i mean then she started telling me my nails were too long so she clipped my nails off like you get it what i mean so it was like <laughs> it was nothing going on yeah. that would put me in that place but it's just at the end of the day it's so funny that when i mentioned it now the devil mm -hmm. said uh here go opportunity for me to play on this so that maybe he'll give in to it and while he in the shower, he'll do something. You get what mm -hmm. I mean? But the devil is a lie. You get what I mean? Because, again, the commitment is what I'm focused on. And the yep. vow that I made to, like I said, to her, to God, and to myself, and for us and our future is more important. You get what I mean? Than a, mm -hmm. than a, than a, than a three, four, five minute, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> this, is a, and this is the thing. And a lot of people are probably laughing. And they're probably like, are they really talking about this on live? Yes, because this is the power of transparency. Mm -hmm. Like, the only way to really transform genuinely is through transparency. And when you really are transparent about your emotions, how mm -hmm. you're feeling, what you're experiencing, and you could be vulnerable with your partner and say, listen, I'm horny. Like, we, we got to cut this out. Mm -hmm. Like, know your boundaries, know your limits, yeah. and validate that feeling because it's going to exist. You're mm -hmm. human. You're yeah. human. But, yeah, like it says, uh, discuss how you are feeling in real time before you go out. And then it's not only discussing sex. You know, I'll mm -hmm. ask, me and Josh will ask each other all the time, like, babe, how you feel? Like, after the dates we have went on, like, babe, how you feel? Like, where your spirit at? Where your mind at? Where your heart at? And stuff like that. And sometimes I'll just catch her. She'll Second. just be, you know, zoned off. Or she'll be smiling. You get what I mean? I'm not being for real. And I'm sorry. She don't like that I'm exposing her. But the love is real. But at the end of the day, look. So, like, we'll ask each other, you know, like, where are you at? Because also, too, yeah. it's important. You get what I mean? I feel like in a way it's not. It's not doing it to kind of like make somebody feel like that they have to do it, but it's kind of like, yo. It's check up. Yeah, people want to know, up. like, you know, if, you know, if what I'm doing, is it impacting your life? Is it having yeah. a good impact or a bad impact on your That's life? Right. It's important to have these conversations. Check in with each other in real time. Don't wait until the moment is over. Then you get what I mean? Yes. No, talk about it right then and there. You feel something. God puts something in your heart to say, like she say all the time, babe, why you always text me? When it's seen with something going on with me, you want to ask me where my spirit at. Like, God need to mm -hmm. chill out. You get what I mean? No. God allows that because it's important. Like, I literally, I'm mm -hmm. going to be honest. Like, I'd be like, God, like, how is it that this man, no, it's either him or his mom. Like, they know my spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that you know that it's a God thing, that he connects you to people that know your spirit. And even if you want to lie and say, I'm good, they can see right through you. They can see right through your spirit. So, that's. Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> you funny. Okay, so how's your willpower? These are questions that you can ask. How's your willpower? Are you okay? Am, am, am I doing too much? You get mm -hmm. what I mean? And are you feeling a certain way? Do I need to take a break? Do I need to step away? Do I need to give you some space mm -hmm. or whatever it is? Is what one of you is wearing pushing the wrong buttons? Like, you know, you kind of look a little, you know, da, da, you get what I mean? Like, these are real questions to ask. You get yeah. what I mean to talk about. And don't be ashamed to talk about it because I feel like a lot of people start getting ashamed. Don't be ashamed to talk about it. It's okay. We're human. Yeah. yeah. And so it says, is that movie you're planning to see a little too hot? Check in with each other and talk. Communication. We talked about it, I think, in part talk, one. Talk, talk. Communication is important to any kind of relationship, even friendships. Mm -hmm. Communication is important because it allows you to understand where the other person is at. 
and it allows you the space to know how to operate, excuse me, how to be, how to feel, how to interact with that person when to step back again and give them space and everything like that. I'm the type, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a type of person, sometimes I just like to be secluded to myself. You mm -hmm. get what I mean? Sometimes, you know, I don't mean to come off snappy, but sometimes I come off snappy. You get what I mean? Just like earlier, you know, I had an inc <laughs> uh, incident <laughs> and they was like, babe, don't be doing, don't be being like that. <laughs> and so I had to call my little sister because I, I was a little aggressive. I just woke up and people know me. If I just wake up or if I'm tired, I'm the most grumpiest young old man that you know. <laughs> I'm telling you. And so like, I, you know, I kind of like said something out the way and I had to apologize to her sincerely, not being coerced into doing it or nothing like that because I had to let her know, like, you know what? Let me communicate even with my little sister that, look, I didn't mean no harm towards you. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? And if I came off hurtful or harmful at the end of the day, I want you to know that I apologize. And she said, I forgive you. And we said, we love each other. You get what I mean? Not only that, now mm -hmm. that you say that, you know, I think that's something that's so strong mm -hmm. for couples, especially couples with children. Mm -hmm. um, when you make a mistake, acknowledge yeah. it. And make sure that, you know, one, you, 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 you ask for forgiveness from your spouse, mm -hmm. but you're mindful of your children because, you know, you're teaching your child what mm -hmm. to accept and what to tolerate. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you don't think that it's like that. But growing up, if you see a certain behavior, mm -hmm. you attract yourself to that behavior and you think that that behavior is okay because you're like, oh, I grew up and I saw that. And then it's just like, no, like you're not going to be able to break generational curses if you're accustomed to the norm, if you're accustomed to what you saw, yeah. that you have to break those habits. Yeah. You are the example that your yes. kids see and what your kids will be attracted to. Yes. That's powerful. Um, the next thing is that your spirit should be telling your body what to do and not the, the other, other way, way around. around. Follow the spirit, man. That's why you have to keep each other strong. And how do you keep each other strong? You pray for one another. Yes. You get what I mean? Me and Jossie have our prayer time. You know what I mean? I'll cover her in prayer. She'll cover me in prayer. You keep each other strong that way. And then you build each other up. You, you speak life into people. You know what I mean? You speak affirmations into people. You get what I mean? And I love that my mom does that to her kids all the time. And that keeps us strong to let us know. You know what I mean? To hold on to your morals, your values, your core values and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And so I love that. But that's how you keep each other strong. Pray for one another. Validate one another. Speak life and again. Exhort, if I'm saying the right word. I don't know. But, you know, speak life into the other person. That's why you have to keep each other strong. When you get weak, it's your partner's job to say no. Remember what we're committed to. Somebody has to be strong. Because if not, you both going to fall. And if you're not strong, if either of you are not strong at that moment, mm -hmm. just choose not to each other, like see each other that day. Yeah. You know, communicate. I'm not saying don't communicate. Communicate, but with boundaries and with parameters. Because, again, your boundaries and your parameters are what establish your relationship and exactly how far you want to go. So somebody asked on TikTok what we're reading from. We're the reading weight. the weight. Um, and so, uh, yeah, like how she said, uh, when... When you get weak, it's your partner's job to say no. What we're not, uh, wait, what? No, remember what we're committed <laughs> to. I'm sorry. When your partner's weak, you bring the discipline. See, it's a, it's, it's a two. It takes it's two to two. tangle. You get what I mean? If she two. weak, I gotta be strong. If I'm weak, she gotta be strong. And if, like mm -hmm. how she said, we both weak, then we don't need to be around each other. You get what I mean? And if we both strong, then Amen. Glory be to God. Yep. But you don't want to allow a person when your partner body has to be able to say no. And and that no is a complete sentence, guys. No. <laughs> you don't need no. <laughs> you don't need to give explanation when mm -hmm. you say no sometimes. I feel like a lot of us are like, you know, when I say no, I have to give a justification for why. No, no is a complete sentence. I said no. I'm not strong enough at this moment. And that's it. Because, mm -hmm. again, you will get that coercion. You'll get that, hey, babe, but you know I'm stronger than you. And you know that this and you know that that. And you got to be careful with that because, again, you can fall. Yeah. So it says um, weekends you bring the discipline. Know your limits. We talk about limits a lot. Safe mm -hmm. zone, danger zone, all that stuff. Know your limits. Monitor yourself. You know what I mean? Sometimes, I'm going to be honest, sometimes, okay, there, there's some people where you may be so in tune with, mm -hmm. some people you're not as in tune with. You get what I mean? So you may not know what they're going through over there. You get what I mean? Or what they're going through and what they're dealing with. But I love how it says is to monitor yourself. Even if you're not communicating this with the person or your partner at the moment, monitor yourself and know where you yes. at and say, you know what? Can you give me a moment? I need to step away for a minute. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Monitor yourself. Monitor your thoughts. 
Monitor your feelings, monitor your emotions. And this is something that we practice. This is something that we are continuing, pra continuously practicing. You know what I mean? It's to monitor self and again, communicate. And you know what's, what's crazy too? Mm -hmm. If you really want to take it to like the psychological perspective, you mm -hmm. have your subconscious and your conscious, yes. right? Speak on so it. So I really, I really want to mm -hmm. dig deep on that level. Um, so your subconscious is to store and retrieve data. The right. function of your of your subconscious is a job to ensure that you respond exactly the way that you are programmed. Mm -hmm. Our minds are programmed to react a certain type of way. You feed whatever it is that you have inside of you. Right. That's what's going to come out. Again, how we said it, what you feed grows, what you starve mm -hmm. dies. Your subconscious mind makes everything you say and do fit a pattern consistent with your self-concept. That's mm -hmm. why I had mentioned earlier to make sure that you pay attention to patterns because patterns are what you will see and will be red flags as opposed to words because words will betray a person. Right. Eventually, you will catch someone tripping up on a lie, but their patterns do not lie. Right. And then when you think of the conscious mind, it's everything inside of our awareness. So our senses, our memories, all this type of stuff are in your thinking of all the time. Your subconscious is the part of your brain that you really don't really think of. And Sigmund Freud really outdid himself with this theory because mm -hmm. if you really think about it, how you mentioned earlier, how you were saying, you know, oh, well, it's, it's crazy how after a conversation, now I'm feeling these emotions. Mm -hmm. It's because your subconscious was already thinking of the conversation we had prior before. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you're not intentionally thinking about it, but it's behind the door. Right. So I, I look at the subconscious as, the behind the scenes man mm -hmm. like you think about it notice that even when you think about something you dream about it too because <laughs> yeah, it's just like you're like why did i just dream about it well mm -hmm. you were just thinking about it subconsciously that's yeah. why a lot of people have that saying like oh were you thinking about it subconsciously yes because it was in the back of your head not the forefront so mm -hmm. be conscious like forget about this the subconscious because obviously you don't have to you have to you know know what you're mm -hmm. feeding your brain but your conscious Focus on what you're focusing on. Like, what am I feeding my mind? Right. What am I feeding my spirit? What am I feeding this relationship? Mm -hmm. Because this is the thing. If right now our goal is to obviously end in marriage with blessings and all this other stuff, our focus point is to say, you know, what, what do we have to do to get there? That step-by-step -step thing. Make it worth your while. Because that's the thing. The blessings of God add no sorrow. That means that yeah. when he gives it to you, it's not going to add pain. Are you going to go through trials? Are you going to go through tribulations? Are you going to go through struggles? Absolutely. Yeah. But when you literally say to yourself, this was worth the wait, yeah. it's going to make you feel so much better. Yeah. Just really be careful what you're feeding your mind. And this goes back to even what Simone asked in the beginning about music, about TV, about all this stuff. Like, your sex drive will determine, like, what even what you listen to because certain music mm -hmm. will take you to that place. Mm -hmm. Notice that, you know, you're, you will never understand a song more than when you're in that yeah. state of mind. Yeah. So, you, like, it, like, you will hear a song, you're like, oh, that song is so dope. And then when you're sitting in that moment, you begin to understand the lyric why because you're going through that situation so imagine you listening to romantic mu um, music and you like oh well i wonder why my hormones are raising what are you mm -hmm. listening to what are you feeding yourself what are you watching so just be mindful of that like that was such a good point that simone brought up it's just like be careful and the crazy thing is too like this was like months ago i had a lot of like you know, worldly music on my phone. I had a lot of different stuff because I love music. I'm a singer, so I sing and I, I'm like, oh, I like the beat. I like the beat. I like the beat. But then I started understanding the lyric and I'm like, oh, wow, I really like this song. I <laughs> really understand the song. So I started resorting to certain songs when I was feeling depressed, when I was feeling down, when I was feeling this, when I was feeling that. And I was feeling that to the point where my brain eventually just became a blob of depression. And I'm just like, what am I feeding myself? And it was the music I was listening to that I was having it on replay. So I decided to delete all of my worldly music. And it wasn't because somebody coerced me or anything like that or mm -hmm. just because they weren't Christian. It was because I knew what it was doing to affect my mind. Yeah. So when you're mindful of that, you it's like, you know, killing it pretty mm -hmm. much. So I'm not feeding it no more. Yeah, that's facts. Uh, finishing what it said, it says to uh, communicate. It says, if you're feeling particularly su uh, susceptible to the temptations of the flesh on a given day, there's nothing wrong with admitting it and communicating about it. Remember, you're both in this together for the long run. Again, it's always considering the bigger picture. Yes. Always considering if we do this, what are we forfeiting? What are we giving up? What are we letting go? 
of at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and so the last thing uh, to end this off that we'll talk about is, is something talked about in here about being aware, uh, beware of idle time. Idle time. Yes. The uh, idol's mind, as we, as Christians, you know, we grow up hearing this all the time. An idol's mind is the devil's playground. An idol's mind is the devil's playground. And a lot of us, we either understand it or we don't understand mm -hmm. it. When your mind is idle, you are liable to get into anything. You're liable to get into things that you never thought you would get into. You're liable to do things that you never thought you would do. It's because in those idle times when you're not feeding your mind, then guess who's who's feeding and playing tricks on your mind? The enemy. It's like God has a voice, but the devil has a voice too. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta pay attention to what voice you're following. Yeah. And that's the thing too. It's like you feel like, oh well, God brought this person into my life. Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I want. And God is like, yo, I I gave this person to you. Now put the boundaries and parameters. So be careful what you're feeding yourself mm -hmm. during that time alone. Yeah. Because Even yeah. It's it's, it's it's rough. Whether that's you spending time alone together or you spending time alone by yourself. Be careful of what you are allowing to seep into your mind, what you're allowing to take ownership of your mind or take part in your mind. Just be careful of all these things because if you don't believe it, I'm a witness to let you know that it is very true. Mm -hmm. It is very, very true. I've had so many moments in my life, even before this relationship, it's, it's so many moments that I have experienced idleness and experience how the devil has and not even only the devil but the the, the, the demons and the spirits mm -hmm. that that were residing within me and and the temptations and the, and you know the things that i wanted to do but you know didn't have the opportunity to do but now that the moment was there you know what i mean i end up doing them you get what i mean so it's just very very important to protect your mind and the bible talks about the mind a lot and and you hear people talk about the mind a lot because the mind is probably one of the most fragile things beyond the heart you get what i mean because the mind you get the mind you got the body you get what i mean you can get somebody to think bad you know about themselves you get them to just you know want to do away with their whole life you get what i mean and the mind is a very very a very very exactly it's the battlefield it's where the enemy attacks us the most and it's that's, where he attacks that's why us he the says most put on the full armor mm -hmm. i think a lot of us are failing because we're not putting on the full armor of god we're mm -hmm. like halfway putting on certain things and then we wonder why we're letting things kind of penetrate our heart and our minds mm -hmm. yeah so again be, be aware of that idle time but we pray we're that something i'm sorry the, the lust prayer oh go ahead babe. no you read it please <laughs> All right. so, so uh there's a lust prayer so we just want to like give you guys this word um that they wrote down on this uh, book um so it says here's a prayer that will help you overcome temptation and lust prayer it says god please help me get control over this beast called lust i will not let it destroy me or disrupt the destiny you have set for my life you said you would provide a way of escape when temptation appears so show me the exit sign right now, Lord, because I'm about to do something that will please my flesh, but harm my spirit. I'm mm -hmm. tired of continuously falling prey to lust. I keep falling, getting back up and falling again. Give me the victory today. I claim authority over my body, my heart, my mind, and my sexuality. You made me sexual, but get, but give me the tools to manage this sexuality in a way that pleases you. You said you never leave me nor forsake me. So I'm trusting in you, Lord. You have authority over this lust and I claim that authority now. Be my strength when I am weak and deliver me from this flesh that threatens to destroy every good thing you've planned for my life. I pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 What I love about that, and I'm and I'm going to be honest, like I said, before we close this out. When I go before God in prayer, I don't just go before God and God, thank you for this. And God, give me this. And God, give me that. And God, do this or this and that. Like, I go before God intentional. And when I go before God, I'm surrendering. I'm going before God. I'm leaving things at the altar, things that I'm not looking to pick up again. You get what I mean? So when I go before God in prayer, I say, God, I surrender lust. I surrender pride. I surrender arrogance. Mm -hmm. I surrender ego. I surrender self-righteousness. I surrender what I know I struggle with the most. Because it's something that I need to be healed from. It's yes. something that I need to be delivered from. If I can't be healed and delivered from these things, then I'll never get to see the life that God has for me. And this is why the children of Israel 
weren't, weren't able to see the promised land is because their demons had too much power over them to where they weren't surrendering them. They weren't giving them to the father. They weren't being obedient to the father. And at the end of the day, it caused them everything that God had promised them. So I want to encourage you with that being said, if you know what you struggle with and knowing yourself means knowing what you have to leave at the altar. Yes. Knowing what you have to go before God in prayer about constantly. It's not just a one-time thing. Continue. Every time I go before God in prayer, I'm laying those same things on the line. And if something new pops up, I'm throwing that in the mix as well. But you have to know yourself and know what you're fighting. Know what you're up against every single day of your life. If it's envy, if it's jealousy, if it's hate, if it's strife, if it's malice, if it's confusion... If it's whatever, any dark thing, whatever it is, lay it on the altar before God. It helps you and it helps you be a better person for the relationship, for the friendship, for people that look up to you, for people that you inspire, people that are encouraged by you, people that are watching you. It helps you in the long run. And so you have to get self right before you can even come together. And that's one thing I know that they did. And that's one thing that we are doing, even though we are together. Don't ever think that we're not working on each other individually. Yes. It's not just about the relationship. It's about, yes, the relationship is a bonus. It's a plus. It's a great thing. But at the end of the day, there's a bigger picture that God has in store and in, in, in plan for us at the end of the day. And we're just parts of that picture. But there's things that we have to work out in our own, working out your own salvation. It says that in the Bible. You get what I mean? But we have to work on ourselves so that when we do uh, get to where God wants us to be and God does it, it doesn't fall apart. Yep. And it can be a lifelong thing and not just a, a, a month or a, a year thing. You get what I mean? No, but it can be a, a lifelong thing and everything that God said is ours. It shall be, it will be, it yes. is ours. So I pray again that something was said that will encourage y'all, you know, in your relationship, in your singleness, in your marriage, whether you, even if you're separated, you get what I mean? Yes. If you're engaged, whatever it is that your status is right now, mm -hmm. I just hope that these lives are encouraging y'all. You get what I mean? We're being vulnerable enough to show you who we are, to show you the path. You know what I mean? We're not just putting our videos out there to make people, you know, jealous. And if you are jealous, who cares? At the end of the day, we're not just doing do that to show you that doing it God's way is possible. We don't know what it's like to have a godly relationship. This is the, the first, first time. It's the first time. This is the first time. I was used to dating sinner women. She was used to dating what? Sinner men. Okay, at the end of the day, we don't know what it's like to have a godly partner. You get what I mean? But God is doing something so different in us and through us. And it will work in Jesus' name. Because at the end of the day, I pray over this woman. And this woman pray over me. And we pray over what we have. And we have people that standing in the gap for us as well. Absolutely. And so I just want to encourage y'all again, work on yourselves, show up to your relationships, Be communicate. Yes. Be present, present, present. You know, it's funny, mm -hmm. man. Tell them about, tell them about the fall thing. Go ahead, my baby. Go ahead. So one thing that I, you know, <laughs> he did, and I know that these lives are a little longer, but cause we don't put timing on it just so we're just conversing. But, um, you know, this, this past weekend, not surprised I'm here in Georgia and um, he had this whole scavenger hunt planned and um, that was so cute. Yeah. I love oh you my so God. Much. <laughs> um, and he he wrote clues down and what I love is that on clue number three, he said, okay, after you're done taking your videos and your pictures, um, we're turning, like we're putting, no, you said putting away the phone. Yeah. Um, and I noticed that I wasn't getting any notifications. I wasn't getting anything like that. Normally I have like my phone on. So I was still ignoring my phone, but I was like, wow, like I had nothing. And at the end of the night, when I go to my phone to pick up my phone, my phone was off. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and I was like, I enjoyed my time so much more because I wasn't paying attention to notifications. I wasn't paying attention to what social media was telling me or whatever. Um, I think it's important whether it's relationally right mm -hmm. to be present with your spouse but even with your children give mm -hmm. them your presence and not just presence mm -hmm. you know like be present with them enough to know that time is something you don't get back you know and invest in your children your your children are investments mm -hmm. your children are something that you know hold your legacy hold your dna so be mindful of that and just say you know what I'm going to be present in my relationship with my children. I'm going to be present in my relationship, you know, my nieces and nephews. And that's one thing that God is working mm -hmm. on me um, about is because I've always been one person that, you know, tends to be secluded at times or yeah. whatever. And 
I have kind of negated, you know, certain things. And I'm just like, wow, like, I really need to focus and hone in on family because family is important. And again, presence over presence. Like, the fact that we were together and fully present and enjoying the moment, enjoying dinner, enjoying conversation, enjoying lashes was truly amazing. So I thank yeah. you for shutting off my phone. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you for saving my battery too. Yeah, I had to charge it that, that night. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, you know, turn off the phone once in a while. This is for you, you married people. Turn off the phone once in a while. Go out to dinner and really focus on your partner. I think we, like, we went to a restaurant last mm-hmm. night and I was telling Darius, I said, babe, like, I'm looking around and people here are so present. You know, up north, you know, people are always on the phone. They're always conversating. So you don't really see that family-oriented thing. And coming to Georgia is so different because you see a lot of families together. You see a lot of people loving mm-hmm. on each other. And that's one thing. Just be fully present in that moment because those are moments you won't get back. Mm-hmm. You will not get back. Yep. So be aware of that. And I yep. thank you for that because I'm always remembering. <laughs> That was funny, but yeah, like she said, be present. You know, it counts more than you know, you know. Um, but like I said, I don't want to continue to bab the babble on and just continue to talk. Um, yeah. But again, we just really hope again that this is really helping somebody. You know, um, even if it's helping one person, we are grateful. You know, we are being obedient to God, and again, we are showing you our journey so that you can know that God's way is the way is possible. It's the way. And he, he said things are impossible with, with man, but with God, all things are. And know in due season, God will bring you your godly man and your godly woman. Just continue to wait and continue to trust God. But I'm going to close us out in prayer, baby. All right. So, uh, Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this moment. We thank you for this live, God. Lord, we thank you for the words that we're giving, God. We thank you for the wisdom. Yes, God. Oh, bade, 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 seke o dabo sita na 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 mo sa. Oh, ya dabo seke o dabo sa. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this moment, God. Lord, thank you for these lives, God. Lord, thank you for the lives that are tuned in, God, and those that will even catch this, God, on the replay, God. Lord, we lift up marriages, God. We lift up people that are single, God. We lift up people that are in situationships, God. Lord, we lift up even friendships, God. We lift up every area of relationship, God. Lord, and we ask. God, that you will heal, that you will deliver, that you will save, God, sanctify, God. Lord, that your will will be done, God. Lord, that you will give us the patience with one another, God. Lord, that you will give us the patience to understand and to learn one another, God. Lord, to be patient with one another, to be understanding, to be compassionate, God. Lord, to be moved by one another's feelings and emotions and concerns, God. Lord, even as somebody mentioned on tonight, God, Lord, that they don't know what it's like because somebody, every time they try to talk, somebody makes them feel that what they are saying is not important and that's just the enemy that's just that's just the enemy because the enemy wants to shut your voice and to make you believe that you are not valuable makes you want to wants you to believe that your words don't matter and wants you to to believe that nobody cares but god cares and we care and so we lift up that person god and we lift up every other person god that is on here that's struggling with something that's dealing with something god lord that's dealing with uh temptation god lord that's dealing with with uh toxicity god that's dealing with anything god lord we lift them up god and we ask god that you would just have your way god lord that you would continue to move in all of our lives god move in all of our homes, God, move in our communities, our families, God, Lord, move in our lives like never before, God, Lord, allow your will to be done, God, allow allow your will to be done, God, on earth as it is in heaven, God, Lord, I thank you for this book, I thank you for what it's teaching us, God, I thank you for how it's growing us and helping us stay committed, God, to the vow that we not only made to one another, but to the vow that we made to you, God, Lord, I ask that you continue to cover us, God, even in the time that we spend alone god allow us god to know the danger zones allow us to know the safe the safe uh parts, God. Allow us to know the parts which not to cross and the boundaries which not to cross, God. Lord, I ask that you continue to give us strength, God, so that we don't have to feel that we just can rely on ourselves and we'll be good, God. Lord, but I ask that you would give us the strength and to give us the wisdom, God, to continue to do it your way, God. Lord, continue to lead us, guide us, order our steps, God. Anoint our way, anoint our path, God. In Jesus' name, touch our thoughts, touch our minds, God. And even in our moments of weakness, God, we ask that you be glorified and that you be strong, God. And 
that you be our strength, God, and that when you give that way of escape, that we don't hesitate, God, but that we run through that exit, God. In Jesus' mighty name, God, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing in this season. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives, God, together and individually, God. I thank you for our ministry, God. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We love you. We praise you. And we appreciate you for all things, God. In Jesus' mighty name, God, again, bless us all. Thank you for this word, God. We seal it in the name of Jesus. We seal it, God. Lord, believing that it is so, and we seal it, God, in confidence, God, knowing that it will work, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Um, do you have any announcements before you go? Um. Well, Life Beyond the Blade, uh, the month of June, we are going to have some special guests. I have not made the flyers nor the announcements because... Um, I'm starting to feel like I'm going to have to go randomly with certain people. Um, so be aware of those random pop-up lives, uh, because God is doing something different in this season. And I feel like, you know, that perfectionist side of me is just like, <laughs> God's definitely trying to deal with me where it's just like, mm -hmm. not everything needs an announcement. Whoever needs to hop on hops on. So the month of June is going to be very is doing. And if you guys want to be, you know, People that come on Life Beyond the Blade and share your story, share your testimony, share what God has done for you. You are more than welcome to DM me, let me know what it is that you want to speak about, how it is that I can serve you. And that's why we're doing them, mm -hmm. is to serve. You know, today I got a message from someone randomly. I'm just like, oh my God, I, I didn't even know we were friends. And they were asking dating advice on Christianity. And it felt good to be able to serve. So do not hesitate mm -hmm. to DM and communicate because that's why we are here, to pray for each and every one yes. of you. And we welcome all the TikTok people who have logged on. It's mm -hmm. the first time us doing three different social medias at the same time. So we thank God for that. So yeah, this was a life relationship part. Right. Yes, sir. I will. I know tomorrow's the holiday, so I'm kind of thinking about doing a Bible study uh, live tomorrow. So if I do, you guys will know about it. Um, but I do have some Bible studies that I'm going to do this upcoming week, um, continuing to stay. I, I don't want to set a day on, so I'm going to just go live when I go live. And I will, you know, yeah. talk about it when I can talk about it. But God bless y'all again. We love y'all. We uh, hope and wish the best for y'all. And we are continuously praying for y'all. Continue to pray our strength. Yes. And if you hate and keep hating because it's motivating, hey. But nah, God bless y'all. Have a go. <laughs> I'm joking. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm not joking, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs>